Now we have a second guitar, so you notice the next different. Uh, what you might notice is the frets back end. So what I did do prior to, there were two holes, so we fill those two holes. I recut the fret slot. I remounted the fret. I kind of rough dressed the end in here because I'm going to redress everything when we go to put this back in because you can see this was the fret that I pulled out. I backed it up with a little bit of finish and we did all the fill. So we tried to make it as unobtrusive and as invisible as we possibly can. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the neck block for reset. So uh, you can use chisels. I like to use these little sanding blocks, especially at this point, because what I'm doing, this is just cleaning out all of the old glue. Now, I know I didn't show that step, but usually when I'm done steaming it out, the glue's soft, I'll take an old chisel, I'll go in there, and I clean out as much as the old glue as I can. You never get it off. So now, I can take my little sanding block, I can go in here, and I can clean all of the glue out. If I don't get it cleaned out, I'm not going to get a good glue joint. Now this guitar is 5.4, I think I did check this one, uh, to be somewhere, was it 92 I think. You don't have your marking numbers with you, do you? I don't. Alright, and this is where the fingerboard was, right? That's where the fingerboard was. So you can see there's almost a quarter of an inch of finish all the way around. When this neck goes in, all right, so you can see where that neck goes, how much finish was still underneath it. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to clean this off, and I take an old chisel, and I'm just going to gently scrape this out. Remember, I'm a trained professional. <laughs> and I just want to get this down to the wood. And I'm gently scraping it. And the reason why I want to take this down is I want to be able to have as much glue surface on here as I can. And I just want to be nice and gentle. I don't want to get too crazy. Okay, I think that's not too bad. And again, this is also getting the glue off of this wood. All right. I especially want to soften because I could actually feel the finish to the raw wood so there was a bit of a, a drop off. Uh, I'm going to be using fish glue to put this back on. Uh, generally I use hide glue. I like fish glue. It's almost just as it's very similar. It's a protein casein glue but I don't need to use a heat pot and to work with hot hide glue right now with a camera it can be a little intimidating so we're just going to be using the hide glue. But, what I wanted to do was remove that step, because I don't want to use glue as a filler, I want wood to wood as much as I can. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in, I'm going to clamp it, and whenever you're going to check your neck geometry, you have to clamp your joint. It has to be put in, and it has to be tight. I can't just push this in and expect that to work. Okay. I'm looking at my neck joint so I can see that this is nice and snug, and this is nice and snug. Everything looks fine. Now, I'm going to tighten it up, and this should be together 
Actually, it is. There it is. Oh. There it is. Now, now I can put a straight edge on this neck, all right? And you can see where I'm hitting. You can hear it's on the bridge. And we are... And I do... That's pretty good. I have the neck adjusted reasonably straight. So here we go. I want this to be about here. So I have to take wood off of the heel to tilt it back. What's going to happen when I do that, that's going to loosen the tenon of the neck. Okay, so what I want to do, we're going to take a little bit off here and a little bit off of here. So I take a very sharp chisel. Can you see that? Yep. And I'm just gently going to shave this. Ever so gently. And you notice I'm cutting from inside or outside in. Alright, so I'm kind of shearing this way. If I go straight across it or the other way, what happens is I can chip lacquer. Alright, so I got to be careful that I don't do that. Now for right hand and left hand, I just do it this way. And you can see I got a nice curve coming up, curl. Alright. Now I'm going to undercut this a little bit, okay, just a little. I don't want it holding off at the bottom. Now I have shims, okay, I have shim material and it's not very, uh, this is only about 10 thousandths thick. I don't want to adjust a lot on the tenon. I want to take my time. Okay, so I trim the shim, and I have plenty of shim material. Put that in here. I'm going to put this back into here. Now I do know that it's going to need more shim to the bottom than it will to the top, because when I removed material from the neck, I'm taking the material off low, not high. So things are going to stay the same at the top, at the bottom they're going to get a little tighter. So now, let's put this together. Okay, now I can see that my neck is protruding. It's above, you see, it's above the top. But what I can see also now, when I eyeball down this way, the plane from here is now coming up above, is now coming above the neck, so, or the, the bridge, and that's what we want. So I have to take a little bit more off the heel, not much, but just a little. And what I will do, I will take care, and I'm going to scribe sand, I'm going to scribe sand the heel in a minute to get this all lined back up. I just take a little bit. I don't need much. And that's shaving ever so slight. If you go too far there, what do you do? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> well, well if, you do, if you overset the neck, and oversetting the neck can be probably worse than undersetting the neck because you can over torque it. Then you'll just have to kind of cut back off higher. So the object is to take itty bitty steps. Don't do a lot at any one time. And just, it's just a simple process. Little bit, little bit, little bit. Too bad. Now, what I may do I have some shim on the other side, if you can see that. And I think I'm going to take that shim out. And 
And I cannot stress enough, if you don't have a sharp chisel, you're just wasting your time doing this. That, that's got to shave. Okay, so now you can see I took, got the, the, the shim out. Now I can take my little sand and stick. And it's all easy peasy Japanesey. I'm going to put a little bit there. I can feel some glue at the corner. You always have to be aware of what can hold you off. Because this has to be a nice fit where okay, I, can see. I can see right down here at the heel I have a little rise so I'm going to take the sanding stick and just clean this off a little bit now when I put that back in can see it I have a high spot right here and that will let me put a piece of paper underneath here and I'm tight here so I have to take a little bit more off of this side just ever so small Now, I'll put that little piece of shim back in. And uh, this is actually mahogany. I made the shim out of mahogany. It's the same material as the neck and the neck block. Put that in here. And I'm just kind of eyeballing to get an idea how high I am. So when I push this back in, the neck is an interference fit. So I want that to be perfect. Here we go. All right. Now, the neck. You can see the neck is reasonably secure. And that's not glued in. I'm looking at the corners of the fingerboard, and you can see right here that corner is just picking up the black ring, and that corner is just picking up the black ring. So I haven't lost my center line. That looks pretty good. And if I take a straight edge, and I follow from the nut here to the center of that hole. I can kind of make a mental note of that, that, that mark on that 12 fret, and I can measure that. And I can see that I'm looking at about 130 thousandths. So I come over here to the base side, and I'll look at that. probably about 140,000 so I'm within 10,000 so that's pretty good so when I look at the joint itself here it doesn't look bad but it's not perfect so I'm going to take sandpaper and I'm going to come underneath the heel and I'm going to clean and that's going to just make those two joint surfaces very nicely so what I do I cut a piece of sandpaper and I'm just going to cut some. Okay. So now, I can put this right underneath here. All right? And I'm gently going to pull.
and I'm just putting a little weight with my thumb at the bottom of the heel and I'm pulling this as straight as I can because I don't want to put a, a round spot in it. I can also see where I had the high spot and I'm reading the sawdust on the sandpaper as I pull it out. Wow. Can you see that? You're down to tolerance is that close. Yeah. Okay, now I've noticed when I'm going to put my neck down, just as I get to the bottom, it wants to kick. So that's telling me that there's something down here holding me off. And that means that it's just basically getting in the way of what I want it to do. And it can sometimes just be something as simple as your shim being a little too wide. So I made the, sh the shim just a little bit smaller, dropping it down. Okay. That's much better. Okay. I also can see that I need to put a little bit more of a spoon in the bottom here. And I got a little high spot right there. And it's hard to believe how little of a piece of wood can hold you off so badly. And I want to keep the sandpaper out of the way. All right, I can live with that. Yep. So now, I'm going to pull a little bit here, and it's just a hair. So now, although I don't have the shim in there, I can push down and you can actually see, so that's telling me right there's my high spot, all right? And it can be very frustrating to find that sometimes. And on the black, you can see the sawdust coming out on the black paper, okay? When I see I have a nice line, right there, then I can stop. And I'm watching this close up the joint, and that needs to take a good bit. I might actually be able to use my chisel and kind of help that along. There's a little more there. Okay. And you notice how I always back the heel up to something when I cut. If I don't, if you don't do that, you can actually tear a piece out, and then that can really be a problem. All right, now. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, much better, much better. Now, this one may not, we were talking about a tapered shim. I may not need to put a tapered shim on this. Uh, you don't always need them. It all depends on how much of the fall away you have. And this actually doesn't look all that bad. So, you notice I have protection on my clamp. Okay. Not too bad. Okay, a little bit more floss sanding. But what I like... That joint is very, very tight. I can pull on it. It's not wiggling. I'm seeing a little bit of gap here and there. Not much. Just ever so slight. But now, with it tight, I can get a reading with my straight edge. Right? And you can see at the middle of the bridge with a straight edge, I'll get a longer one. Right here. Don't want that that long. I guess I will use this one. Uh, what I want to see right here at the point of the saddle, right there, I got about 
a sixteenth of an inch, which is just about perfect. I would like to be a little bit higher. Uh, 0.094 I think is the perfect number, but I'll usually take anything from a sixteenth to an eighth. Okay, so I can take a piece of paper and you can see tight, and here's a little gap, tight. Okay, so I'm a little tight at the heel, and this side open all right so if I'm open down here and it's tight here that means I have to take it off over here you always have to remember you're taking it off at what's holding it off so you, you got to learn to read your gap and why do you have the gap so there you go can you see this the dust coming off there oh yeah all right and this is a 400 grit paper And you'll, you have a good bit of interference here because you have one small area that's really holding it down. When you start getting this perfect, it actually starts sanding a lot easier because you have a larger contact point. Okay, that's nice. It's coming down. I can come across here a little bit. So you know you've done enough that you're sanding the whole piece, not just the high spot. Yeah, yeah. When, when, you're, when you're still hitting one or two points, it wants to fight you. When the whole tenon, this whole cheek is being sanded, it's a much more comfortable pull. Because right there you're getting like a, a stick and grab. Alright? But you can see, you can see the dust that's coming off, and it's just, this is a part that is tedious, but if you want to do it right, this is how you got to get it perfect. Okay? Now here I can feel I'm hardly rubbing, so that's telling me everything still is on that side of the fence, so to speak. So I'm going to work more on that, that side. So now when I clamp this, you can see how nice and tight that joint is. And when I clamp it, you can see it pulling. See how it's pulling itself in? Oh uh, yeah, right. Wow. Okay. That's because wow. the this is all wedges. Okay. So as it's going in, the, the more that this wants to go down into the neck, the further down it wants to go, the more this dovetail wants to push it in. I so see. it's all about getting this joint huh. clean. Wow. And it's, you just got to remember, a dovetail joint is a simple wedge joint. That's all it is. We're at the point now where the neck set is basically done. The next part will be the finish touch up and then glue in. Now the finish touch up because of all of what we've done and what has been done with this guitar before. I have a couple of little dinks I gotta fill in. Uh, basically this is all clean so I'm gonna do all of the touch up work and then glue it back in. But let me explain to you how I will glue it. So after the next set is done as you can see I have my shim in here alright and I clamp this into I will put glue on this surface, I will put glue on this surface, I will run some glue down along here because that's going to actually help fill any minute voids of the joint and if you ever looked at your Martin you'll probably see on a, especially on a humid day, you'll see where that, you'll have a white line, mm -hmm. that's actually the glue showing the water and then I'll run just a little bit of glue along the perimeter. So the actual glue up process only is a couple of seconds long. I have a radius block. Okay, so I put my glue on. I would glue my shim. Sometimes I'll put glue on both places because I just think sometimes putting glue on both sides is the way to go. So now I put my shim in. I'm glued. I will take my clamp and my initial is just to hit this tight. Now, I also want you to see that the fingerboard is reasonably tight to the top. Now granted, right now there's a little bit of gap there, but when I take the next step, which is this, because this I'll put on here, and this will close up the joint along the edge of the fretboard, because I will clamp this to here,
Then I clamp. I can clamp that onto here, that onto there. The joint, I'm looking at my my points here, the visual points, they're tight. Now I can take another clamp and this will ride right on the transverse brace and I can push this down and now, if Maury can see this, I can take the paper and the paper does not penetrate the joint. Over here it does not penetrate the joint and as I said when it's sight down here there's such a small amount of fall off I don't think this one would require a tapered wedge. If I would require a tapered wedge, I would make it, and this would all go in at the same time. So that is how we reset the neck. When the glue is done, we'd do a setup. I generally do a fret dress, full setup, and you get your guitar back. And that's how we reset a neck. So I hope you learned something, and it educated you a little bit to what the process is. And granted, this has only been maybe an hour. The actual process does take about three, four hours because I did a lot of prep work before. So now you know why the value of a Martin warranty is so valuable. It's hard to believe they're paying more now for the next set than people paid for their guitars. Yeah. Think about that. Huh. So, Mari, thank you for stopping by. Thank you. I hope you have some video that you're going to enjoy. Lots of fun. And uh, from my shop to yours. Thank See you, you soon. Dee -dee 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 -dee.